My name is Michael Schwabe. I'm a mechanical engineer, professional engineer, almost all of my life. I uh, went to Oregon State University, and then from there I was commissioned into the U.S. Navy, trained in nuclear power. I was a nuclear submarine watch officer. I spent hours supervising the operation of a nuclear power plant on that submarine, and hours and hours hanging from a periscope directing the operation of the submarine. I had jobs after that and ultimately was at the San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station working as an engineer there, a systems engineer. And I had a god knock. I hit my hard hat protected head on a pipe and my life changed. I had a cervical whiplash concussion. And I went into pain everywhere. Vision function changed. I became sensitive to all sorts of sounds. I could hear things that other people couldn't hear. I was in pain. I had fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, you name it. And it was endless. I'd had a head injury. And very early on, a neurologist took me aside and said, Michael, you had a head injury. There isn't any diagnosis, treatment, medication, magic bullet that erases this, that heals this. There's no healing path from any diagnosis that I can give you. You're going to have to find your way through this. And you'll know by a gut sense what you need to do. Insurance won't cover most of it. You'll have to pay for it. And I trust you'll find your way. Well, that was in 1995 that the doctor said that to me. And Ian, my life was still upside down. I had two teenage children at home. I couldn't do my meditation practice. I could only take myself to work and do whatever I could do there. If I showed up, I got paid, and I had enough to support myself and my children. Along the line, I learned about pranic healing. I learned so many things, kinesiology. In 2000, the chiropractor said, Michael, there's this Egyptian coming to town, Ibrahim Karim, an architect, a doctor. He's teaching something called biogeometry. It's about shape, energy, and function. You ought to go to that class. I think there's something there for you. Well, the class was in Manhattan Beach in the LA area, and I went up to the class, and Abraham started to Karim. Abraham Karim started to talk. And there was this incredible connection. It was like through time and space, who knows how many lifetimes I had done this before. When Abraham spoke, I understood what he was saying in between the lines. And almost immediately, I knew how to remediate the forces of nature, how to adjust my home and my office space so that I could be comfortable. And I was good at it. And I continued this process to 2006 when something changed. I became more sensitive to everything. My ears rang. Something happened at home. The Stetzer meter would go from 200 to 2,000 at 9 o'clock in the evening. And there wasn't anything I could do to change it. Earplugs, balancing. And it was at this point that I took up building biology. I had Larry Gus come to my home. We looked at things. I started the classes. I got instruments. I learned how to measure and mitigate electromagnetic radiation from there. Also air quality. At some point in all of this, you know, I realized that my god knock was what building biologists call a rain barrel experience. It's like something happens and all of a sudden the body can't accommodate, can't maintain its balance. I lost my balance with that head knock. God, you know, and it seemed like an eternity before I got some of it back. 2006, I started that training. I mitigated my house. I left work in 2008. 2011, I reviewed the building biology classes. 
and finished the project and became a certified building biologist, hung out my shingle. Well, I'm still a professional engineer. I'm doing building biology, environmental consulting. I do it at so many levels. For me, part of my recovery from the head injury and all the sensitivities was to figure out what was going on in my environment. Whatever it was, I learned how to measure, measure it, learned how to mitigate it. This is from radio frequencies, Wi-Fi, electrical fields, magnetic fields, dirty electricity, and the earth, geopathic. The earth is tenacious sometimes and it's being ge geopathic. So fast forward to today, um, I can say that you know, half of my work is in the building biology, classic electromagnetic radiation, air quality, some design kinds of things, and half of it is geopathic assessment and remediation. What is that? The Earth has an energy. There are Earth lines called Hartman Curries. With the proliferation of radio frequencies through mobile antennas and you know personal use items like Wi-Fi, cordless phones, and the like, the Earth has become, you could say, it's become contaminated with all of these things, and they're carried in the Earth lines. So there's a combination of things going on here. We put up antennas every place, and the antennas. In the broadcast, there's an energy, you know, it's like there's a frequency. Every radio frequency has a property. It has an electromagnetic field, some uh, electrical field. There's a frequency. But there's a subtle energy quality with it. It's black. It's infrared, sometimes orange. Electrical fields are primarily orange. Magnetic fields are primarily infrared, and all of them carry a negative quality. And these can all be found in the earth lines, and they can all be found in cities where there's a densification of their radio frequency. And I find whole communities dark, and they're sensitive people, and they don't know what to do and where to go. Some of my clients are medical doctors. One client, a medical doctor, hired me to do her home and another home and another place. When she received a report, I heard that she said, I knew it was bad, but I didn't know it was that bad. The measurement is through the principles of biogeometry that I've learned through Ibrahim Karim and then adapted in my own ways to this process. And the remediation is a whole other subject, but I can say this. It involves the shape of the house. It involves control points, which are like acupuncture points on the earth. And the acupuncture points are treated with a reverence. This is part of the earth, and they're consecrated. The earth is involved, and all the energies are involved in a way, in a form of focused prayer, a protocol, a procedure that changes that area and uplifts it, you know, and makes life easier for the clients, for the homeowners, for the neighbors. Uh, one woman. In a, in a rural area near Santa Fe, multiply chemically sensitive, electrically sensitive for 19 years, disabled. I was at her home, you know, and I stood there next to her bed and my legs and feet ached because of what was in the earth lines. And there was a remediation and life changed for her. It went from extremely geopathic to extremely geoprosperous. In the biogeometry world, we call that DG3. It was amazing, this change. Two weeks later, she confided, Michael, this morning I woke up and I felt good. This is the second day in a row. And I can't remember the last time I said that. Six months later, she goes on a 2,000 mile trip by herself in a car and she hadn't been anywhere by herself in 19 years. You know, there's, that's a geopathic story. That was like an incredible, like, oh my gosh, you know. I could have those every day. If I had clients that were willing. 
similar things can happen with mitigations of electromagnetic radiations in the home. So many of my clients hardwired their systems, you know, intended good, and I get to their home, and every device that could be Wi-Fi enabled was Wi-Fi enabled, and they didn't know it. We turn all these things off, and there's quiet. Even the guy says, God, it's quieter here. And recently, you know, when these things were turned off, she wept. She sat next to her partner, sort of scooched in, and she wept. Wept with joy and relief. Well, here I am, this, this mechanical engineer, this building biology environmental consultant. And, you know, I'm also a cosmic engineer. And when I say cosmic engineer, hey, it's like, it's what does my client need? What, how it works for me is when someone comes to me and says, help me. A woman called me on the phone and said, I saw you on a YouTube. I have a resonance with you. All I want to do is be well. I have Lyme. Would you help me? Another woman calls, you know, and, and all she needs is information. Can I do this, this, or this, or this? And, 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 and ideas come to me. Inspirations come to me. You know, and it's very practical. Electromagnetic radiation, air quality mold, some sort of design thing, the earth. And it extends to the individual themselves in terms of what they need. You know, if a person comes to me and says, help me do this, this or this or this, somehow I have an inspiration. I'm guided. I'm guided to know what to do and how to help that person. At one point, you know, it's like I couldn't use a computer. I couldn't use anything. I couldn't even see. My eyes went in opposite directions. I wore earplugs around fluorescent lights and everything. I was frail. I was soft. I was in so much pain. And I needed to survive for myself, for my children, you know, and it started me on this path. Along the way, I, to, to be able to work, I enlarged all of the printing material that I needed to see to 11 by 17 paper. That's like a 50% reduction over normal. Wow, I did that for 16 years. And then I finally got glasses. There was a whole period of time where I couldn't use a computer. I had an assistant, or I did this or that. There was a period of time when I had mold. There was mold in my home. There was mold in the places where I worked. I've had Lyme. I had this whole host of ailments. And somehow, I got through to have a kind of help, to have a life. There's some fragility. There's things that I need to do to take care of myself. There are so many things that I've learned from all of this. And I still have electrical sensitivity. We take a look at this garb. It's a silver all hoodie from, from Les CMS. It's 30% silver, 70% rayon. You know, it's not perfect. But in this room with Wi-Fi where I spend eight hours a day or more, you know, in the hotel, you know, on the streets of Montreal, it provides just that increment of margin that allows me to maintain a stasis in my inner body. Airports are similar. In my home, I don't have Wi-Fi and a lot of electrical gadgets. I don't need this. I go to clients' home, and I don't need this because the exposures are short. It's just like a, it's like a special dispensation to be able to be here in this biogeometry class with Ibrahim Karim. Um, you know, there's so many, so many pieces of wisdom that I can share, and. I can share that some families aren't sympathetic to the environmentally sensitive person. My family is not sympathetic to me. I'm not offered accommodations in my mother's home or my brother's or siblings' homes. 
and, and it saddens me. You, you know, and I see this in my work with my clients. I also see families holding their loved ones dearly and doing everything they can to support them. I see the whole realm of things. And I can say this for all those environmentalists. Okay, I think what we're going to do now, we're going to uh, stop with uh, our digestive hand. Maybe it would be good to stop after lunch, you know, so that we move it in. All of these people are special to me. They're special to me because they're they're my family. And my definition of family is family is where people know you. If you've been environmentally sensitive in any way, there's a special type of compassion, a special type of like sense of like you could say the spirit oneness with all toleration for differences something electric sensitive people for the most part environmentally sensitive people have this sense they've been through so much hell that it, it's moved them to this like place inside which I call I'm going to call it a special spirituality it's like the God not church the church of God not and I'm a Minister in the Church of God. <laughs>